Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to another edition of the Sports Week in Review here on TV TV. Mike Neville along with Chuck Warner. Well, we're winding up to the uh, school year, and that means we're winding up high school sports as well. And, Tucker, we're going to be in with track and field. We have the conference championships and the regional championships, and the Brook Point boys team captured the 5A North Region meet as they won the championship, but it was close. They edged Tuscarora by just two points, 64-62 in the team scoring. So Brook Point wins the championship, and Brook Point has had some terrific track and field athletes throughout the year. And clearly, as they, you know, they're winning this uh, event right now, yep. and hey, two points, but you know, any which way you can, you got to get that W, and right. they found a way to do it. No style points, but they did. Yeah. Uh, they had a terrific team effort. They were led by uh, Damon Drew. He had a pair of second-place finishes in the 100 and 200 runs, and he finished second in both of those races to North Stafford's and to Kim Morton. That name sounds familiar because he was a heck of a football player for the Wolverines program. He won both of those events for North Stafford. However, Drew did anchor the Blackhawks winning 400 relay team, so he was a very integral part in Brook Point capturing the boys' championship. Massaponics' and Spencer O'Neill also was a winner as he captured first place in the high jump competition. And over on the girls' side of thing, North Stafford was seventh. The Wolverines' Kelsey Smith won the shot put and the Wolverine 1,600-meter relay team took first in that event. And Brook Point's Shayla Smiling was a winner as well. She won the 100-meter run for Brook Point. The Blackhawks finished 15th in the team scoring, while Mountain View was 13th. Massaponics finished 17th in the team scoring. The 6A state meet is set for June 5th and 6th in Newport News. And I would expect uh, some pretty good results from the local uh, folks uh, when they head down to you know, Newport News for the state meet. Yeah, the, the schools that are in the 6A right now from our area have always done pretty well in track. Uh, Colonial Forge, obviously, and you can yep. also get River Bend and Stafford and throw that in there. These teams are going to continue to have success as they go on and on. And maybe they won't be able to replicate you know, state results every single right. year. But they've got strong teams this year. I think they're going to keep going very well, and they'll probably get the results that they want. Exactly right. Now, the uh, 3A East region meet was held, and the James Monroe girls team finished second to Culpepper, leading the way for James Monroe in that meet was uh, Sharnia Brown. She captured the triple jump, and Alexis Clark, her teammate, took first in the disc disc discus, that is, <laughs> to lead the Yellow Jackets in that category. James Monroe's 400 relay team also finished in first for the Yellow Jackets. The James Monroe boys team tied for eighth in the 3A East Region meet. They were led by Brandon Lawrence. He won the 300 hurdles and finished second in the 110 hurdles. And it's amazing to me, uh, some of these uh, athletes, how they can compete in different events and have top five finishes. In this case, for Lawrence, he had a uh, first and a second place finish. Just amazing how they can recoup and have the energy to continue to perform throughout the entire meet. Well, athleticism reigns at the amateur level, no matter what sport you're right. in, really. But again, uh, it's like you said, just being able to come back from one event, go to another, not even an hour later, and still keep finishing it. Right. Nice. right. That, that really speaks to how well these kids are trained these days. Right. So credit to the coaches as well as to the athletes for being able to pull this off. And if you're not familiar with track and field, the reason the coaches do this, of course, is they can gather points, and that's what they're hoping to, you know, and of course for the Brook Point boys, that resulted in a uh, win, a team win uh, championship. So that's why they do it. They try to collect points throughout the uh, track meet. High school baseball action, and like I said, we're into the uh, conference tournaments. Eastern View has earned a berth in their seventh straight championship game. The Cyclones edge Cortland 5-4 in the conference 22 semifinals. Eastern View's Luke Easter knocking in the game-winning run in the bottom of the seventh in their final at bat. His base hit brought home uh, Chayton Lucas in the bottom of the seventh for that game-winning run. Good effort by Cortland, though. They were down at 1.4-0. They rallied to tie the game at four apiece, but again, unfortunately for the Cougars, Easter View came up with a big hit when they needed it. Yeah, and it seems like Conference 15, no matter the sport, has always been, or 22, excuse right. me, uh, mixing my uh, numbers up <laughs> here, but it's always been Eastern View beating one of the local area teams from Fredericksburg or Spotsylvania uh, in the semifinal, even though I think that those are probably the two best right. teams in the conference, exactly. and here it happens again in baseball, so... Eastern View, what can you say about them? They've yeah. played really well. And uh, by the way, Zach Thomas drove in a pair of runs, had a pair of hits for Eastern View. That's the seventh win in the last ten games for the Cyclones. I believe they're going to take Fauquier on in the final, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for a chance to continue their season. Meanwhile, over in Conference 15, this has been a great season for Conference 15. We've been talking a lot about North Stafford, and rightfully so, but how about Mountain View? It was the Wildcats that end up winning the Conference 15 championship 10-0 over Potomac. Jake Flett, to Flett tossed a, a no-hitter 
for the Wildcats. And Connor Cox, uh, Harry DeNudio, also Bob Grimowski, all drove in two runs apiece for the Wildcats in that victory. So they advanced now to the 5A North Region Tournament. So we've been talking about North Staff. We're going to talk about them in a minute. But Mountain View really put together, much like Eastern View, a late run here, uh, Tucker, to capture the uh, Conference 15 Championship. And we saw them at the beginning of the year. Our very first CVTV game of the week yep. got Mountain View winning a big game over Colonial Forge. And it was a big win. And I don't think that I expected this type of season from Mountain View uh, at any point. But really, looking back on it, we should have known better. We right. should have known how talented this team is, how deep they are. They've got a lot of good players. And this 10-0, okay, that's a little surprising right. because you don't expect to win any championship game 10-0. But I'm not surprised at all that they took the crown. Right. And speaking of North Stafford, they also are moving on to play in the 5A region, uh, 5A North Region Tournament. The Wolverines top Massaponics in the Conference 15 Consolation Game. Ryan Kennedy and Austin Myers teaming up on a three-hitter as the Wolverines were winners over Massaponics in that 5A, or in that uh, conference game, I should say. And uh, Ian uh, Pappy, Austin Myers, they had two hits apiece and drove in a pair of runs for North Stafford. 8-2 was the final in that contest with Massaponics. Girls High School Softball, congratulations to Brook Point. The Blackhawks, very young team, but they win the Conference 15 title, another 10 nothing win. Now this is a surprise because they beat Mountain View, who's one of their top rivals. Mm -hmm. I did not expect this kind of a blowout, to be honest with you. And I think that I saw that this is the first time Brook Point has won this title game since the mid-1990s, yeah, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So it's been a long time since they've had this level of success with their softball program. Yep. But with such a young team right now, I think they'll be able to continue this two, three years into the future at least. Yeah, well, they have a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. You would think this is a very good start for Brook Point. Uh, led, leading the way was uh, Nicole Lucia. She tossed a three-hitter for the Blackhawks. Brook Point's going to host a 5A uh, North Regional game coming up on Monday. Massaponics is also still alive. They're going to be playing as well in the 5A North Region Tournament after edging North Stafford 5-4 in the consolation game. Tori Risner driving in. The game-winning run for Massaponics in the bottom of the seventh. Allie Patrick and Abby Akers had a pair of hits for the Panthers in that one. And a couple of girls lacrosse matches for you before we go to break in uh, girls high school lacrosse. Once again, for Massaponics, it was the Callan sisters leading the way as Massaponics was an 18-13 winner over the uh, Patrick Henry in the uh, West North semifinals. I don't know where they came up with that one. Madison and Savannah scored seven goals each for the Panthers. I'm sorry, North Stafford was in the Mass Bonnet Seed 1813. And in the 6A semifinal, regional semifinal, was Colonial Ford rallying for a 13 10 deficit. They slipped past Patrick Henry. 1713 was the final. Big game for Anna Moffin. She led the Eagles with nine goals. Teammate Olivia Strobel at his spot. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to catch up with Jennifer St. Howard. She's going to talk to Jermon Bushra, the NFL player from King George, about his upcoming camp. That's coming up. <laughs> 